What's up you data friends, it's Yanis here and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to go over how you can connect to Binance using Binance API and Python, pull some data from Binance into your local environment, run some analysis on that crypto data and then visualize the data and then create this Streamlit app from scratch. In this stream leader, we can actually change the symbol over here on the left hand side into BTC, which is Bitcoin, for example. Then we can edit the interval and also the look back time, click enter, and this is going to update our data over here. What we can see over here is that we have the current price of the symbol selected. The 20 EMA, 50 EMA, 100 and 200 EMAs over here. So you can use these analysis if you want to make some investments or some trades. Right, going back and before we start this video, let me just say that if you're passionate about data analytics and data science, then please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos. Right, starting with our first step is to connect to Binance. To do this, you need to make sure that you have Binance.client installed on your environment. If you don't have this, then you're gonna to need to run pip install and then python-binance, and then you're gonna to have to restart the kernel. The other libraries we use is Pandas, NumPy, and Plotly. Next, we have to specify our API key and API secret. These two numbers now, you are going to get from your Binance account. So if you go over here into um, profile and then account, and under account, click on API management, over here, you will be able to create a new API. And this new API is going to give you a key and a secret, which is what you are going to copy and paste over here. Then you need to initialize your Binance client by saying client equals client and then pass the API key and then the API secret from here. Right, next we need to create a function that pulls data from the Binance API. To do this, we are going to create this function called get historical K lines. And this function is going to take as inputs the symbol, for example, BTC USDT, the interval, which is actually the time frame for the candlesticks. So 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or one hour or one day. And then the loopback is actually the loopback period. So how many days we want to go back and pull data for. And then the return is going to be a pandas data frame with all the data. To do this, we are saying try, and then we are calling the get historical K lines function, which is provided from the client, which is basically from Binance. And this function takes as inputs the symbol, the interval, and the loopback time. And then we are storing all the data from this function into K lines, and then we are making these K lines as a pandas data frame. And the columns are going to be the timestamp, the open price, high price, low price, close price, volume, and all these other columns over here. Then we are just limiting the data from our time frame to the columns we need. We are making timestamp as a daytime. We are setting the timestamp into as index, and then we are making all of these data as float numbers. And then we are returning our data frame. So if we run this quickly and then we try to test our function, which is this one over here, I am setting the symbol to be BTC USDT. I am setting the interval to be 15 minutes and I am setting the loopback time to be one day ago UTC. And then I run my function, I store it into DF and then I'm visualizing my data frame just to see if this works. And as you can see, this returns a data frame with the open, high, low, close, and volume, which is all these columns over here in our function. And then this data frame goes back one day. So if we visualize all the data frame, it's going to go back 24 hours from now. Right, the next step now is to add the EMAs, which stand for exponential moving averages. 
These averages now are actually used in technical analysis to smooth out the price and identify trends. They are actually used a lot more in other scenarios. So down here, I think I have a few scenarios. They are used when there are crossovers. So when a shorter EMA crosses above a longer EMA, the shorter EMA is, let's say, the 20 EMA over here, crosses above a longer EMA, and the longer EMA is going to be this 100 EMA over here, then it signals a potential uptrend, for example, and vice versa is going to be a bearish case scenario. They are also used in trend confirmation, so whenever the price is constantly above a particular EMA, for example, the 50 or the 100, then it can confirm is actually an uptrend. And they are also used as support and resistance. So whenever the price touches the EMA, it bounces off as support or it bottoms out as resistance. So if we check our Streamlit app, for example, and then we scroll out, so we zoom out, you can see that, for example, this blue EMA, which is the 20 EMA, is actually acting as support. So whenever it touches this EMA, it bounces, it touches it, it bounces, etc., etc. And in the same case over here, where we have a reversal, you can see every time it touches the EMA, it bounces down, it touches the EMA, it bounces down, it touches the EMA, it bounces down. So you can actually analyze these EMAs in order to make some investments or make some quick trades. Right, going back and in order to add these EMAs now in our data frame, we are creating this function called add underscore EMA. It takes us input the data frame and then the periods. And in our case, the periods we are going to use is the 20, the 50, the 100, and the 200 EMAs. And to add them in our data frame, we are saying for period in periods, these periods over here, then we want to add this new column called EMA underscore the period. So EMA 20, for example. And then we are going to use this function over here on the close price. So DF close price dot exponential moving average. The span is going to be the period. So it's going to start with 20 and we're going to take the average and we're going to return the data frame. So if we run this quickly and then we run our function down here, you can see that on our existing data frame, which was up until here, we have added the 20, the 50, the 100 and the 200 EMA lines. Right, and the last function we are going to create is our plotting function, which is basically the function that creates this plot you see over here, which we are then going to add in our Streamlit app, if I zoom out, which is this plot you see over here. To do this, I'm going to go back, I'm going to zoom in again, and then start from over here. So first we defining our function as plot underscore data with EMA. And we are passing only our data frame, which is going to be this data frame we have above here. Then we are initializing our figure and then we are adding our first trace. And our first trace is going to be a candlestick plot. So I'm passing our df.index, which is basically the timestamp you see over here as our X axis. And then we are passing open price into open. High is going to be under high. Low is going to be under low. By the way, this open high low is actually the weeks you see over here. So that's the high week over here. But the actual close is this number over here. It's not at the top, which is the week. That's why we have the open, high, low and close over here. And then the name is going to be candlesticks. Then we are going to add our EMAs and we are going to say for EMA period in our 20, 50, 100 and 200 periods that we have used before, we are going to add our second trace and this is going to be go.scatter. And in this scatter, we are going to use the same index as before. And then our Y axis now is going to be the EMA underscore and then the EMA period, which is 20, 50, 100 and 200. And the mode is going to be a line. That's why we see these lines over here as our EMAs. And then we are also adding EMA and then the name of EMA period, which is going to be our legend you see over here. 
Next, I am customizing the layout. So I'm adding a title. The X axis title is going to be time. The Y axis title is going to be price. So price and time, as you can see. And then I'm also saying range slider visible equals false. And then I am saying figure dot show. So if I run our function quickly and then we test our function, all we have to pass is our data frame that we have before. There you go. You can see that we are plotted our data using our function. The next thing we have to do now is that we need to put everything together so we can create this streamlit app over here and deploy it. However, I'm going to explain this in the next video. So we keep the Python and the functions in one video and then the Streamlit app in another video. Right, so I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've gained enough value out of this video. If you feel like you did, I would really appreciate it if you click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos.